All right. Do you all understand the save taxes thing? Are you educated enough to meet a business owner and explain to them how they save money doing the program? Right? Somebody be honest with me. Okay, you're not. All right, the guy closes cases. He's not even using that tool in the toolbox. The tool is in the toolbox. He needs to understand that, all right? So we'll be talking about that, all right? When's the best time for me to explain that? Next Monday? All right, remind me, Mark. Next Monday, I'm going to talk about that. It takes more than five minutes. What? Right. I don't understand how we can come in and still um, the PE P E O. The PEO company is yeah. trying to like bring us in because of right. the end is like they're in a dilemma and they don't know if they have to bring us in and all that. So right. So it's not P O, it's P E O. You have to say the let the nut letters. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so don't say P O. Okay. Alright, it's P E O. All right. All right, professional employee organization. That's what they stand for. All right. When they say we have a PEO. Right, but we really like your product, right? You say, no problem, let's figure out how to do this together because you control your PEO, right? A PEO is the same as having a bookkeeper and an accountant, right? Who's running the business? You or the bookkeeper or the accountant, right? As much as my accountant wants to run my business, he don't, all right? So you just say, no problem, you bring that to your AD and we see what we can do about that. Here's what PEOs are. PEO started about five, six years ago and they are like they go into businesses generally small ones right less than 10 employees like blue collar companies right where there's a guy and he's a diesel mechanic and he knows everything about being a diesel mechanic and he has like four or five diesel mechanics that work with him right but he knows nothing about paying his own bills right his wife used to do it but she left him this is why peos were created i'm not kidding Right? So now he doesn't know what to do or how to pay his bills. PEOs were created for this. They go in, they say, we'll open your mail, we'll pay all your bills, we'll control your checking account, right? We'll run the whole back end of your business. We'll do the HR part, we'll do the W9s, we'll do the W2s, we'll do the W4s, right? And we'll also bring you insurance benefits, right? So you pay us $1,500 a month instead of hiring a person in house, and we'll do it for you. But what the employers don't realize when they do that, is that the PEO is making money off the insurance. The PEO is making money off the bookkeeping. The PEO is also getting $1,500 a month. It's a very profitable business thing, but the service is generally lacking, and so is the quality of the benefits, right? So when you have that, you just say, hey, no problem. They work for you. If you want to add this, we can, because here's a big thing. We have broker contracts, right? So if you have a business that wants to work with this PEO, Right? I will go to the PEO and say, I have a contract. He wants to work with me. I'll make you a deal. PEO, I'll pay you to let me in. But I want three to four other clients too. So I'll turn that one close into five for you. Do you see what I'm saying? A PEO is an insurance broker, right? And a bookkeeper, and a mailman, right? And an HR department. It's a everything. Do you see what I mean? Right? And I tell you, if any of you ever get tired of being in Liberty, but you want to be in insurance, open a PEO. All right. What's one of the benefits of doing our program? What's a big benefit? Let's say guys, like, I don't care about taxes. I don't pay them anyway. All right. What's that? Yeah, that's not a benefit because it also doesn't cost me nothing if I don't do it. What's it cost you? No, I don't pay my taxes anyway. I absolutely not. Say, okay, save it doesn't cost anything, is not a value. Here's why, right? Some of us are chubby, right? Is there any reason we, at, we can't take our butt outside and take a walk? Cost you nothing. It costs you nothing to look good at the pool, right? It costs you nothing. Does it cost you anything to go to the public library and read a book and get smarter? No, but Kenny's watching Grey's Anatomy. Cost you nothing isn't a motivation. Cost you something is a motivation, Mark. You gotta realize it costs you something. What's something that's a huge thing? Retention. Retention of your employees. You're a blue collar skilled company. You're a white collar skilled company. You hired somebody, you onboarded somebody. Let me ask you, Mr. No one's asking this question. Let me ask you, right? How much does it cost to onboard one of your high-end employees? 
oh man, Repo spent about $10,000 on training. That's what it's worth, right? Because if you don't have benefits and now you do have benefits, your retention here goes up. So if you say no at the end of this presentation, you're telling me that you're okay with writing me a check for 10 grand and I'll make you a deal. If you say no at the end of the presentation, you write me a check in my name for five grand, right? And I won't follow up with you <laughs> and keep a straight face and stare him right now. <laughs> They're going to laugh. Right? But guess what they're going to do? They're going to hear like, wow, this is worth 10 grand. Because the cost of onboarding an employee is 10 grand. Do everybody understand what that is, onboarding? That means going out, going to Career Builder, going into Indeed, putting up a job ad, paying for it. It's very expensive, right? Going through 30 candidates, a bunch of crap, one's qualified, bringing them on board, getting them registered with OSHA, getting them a forklift operator license, right? Maybe sending them to a little welding school in Hobart for the weekend, right? getting the guy a little, his workstation, right? Getting him new safety gear, right? And then getting him a welder and a torch, all cleaned and ready to go, right? And then the person starts being production. Mm -hmm. That costs that company 10 grand. You should be asking, right? What does it cost to onboard somebody, right? If you forget the word onboard, what does it cost to hire somebody and get them productive in your business? All right, you're LinkedIn, right? So we're just going deep, right? You're LinkedIn. Guys, no one is finding you on Instagram, right? Because everybody could be like, you know, Bebe Jesus 62 right? They're not looking at your Instagrams. But if you think people are not Googling your name, right, to verify your online resume and verify you say who you are, you're crazy, mm -hmm. right? The HR ladies are looking for reasons to go tell their business owner why they shouldn't do business with you, right? And one of them is we can't find them. How do you not exist online, right? If don't leave today without setting up a LinkedIn and making it look professional and making sure two or three other people in the building verify it's professional. This photo, I know how much you love it though, ain't professional, right? It's a headshot. Now don't, if you got two people like, yeah, that's not the headshot to use, listen to them, okay? It's not your best picture, right? Make it professional. We have the banners. We have all that stuff. Set it up. Make sure your LinkedIn looks good. Here's why. Don't give them a reason not to see you. If they Google your name off your business card, your LinkedIn is going to pop up. And if it's like, hey, I've been here and blah, blah, blah. This is the company you're with. And then they click the link to the agency. And then they see like, you know, 150 people work here and all that extra stuff. That backs you up. Right? That backs you up. Don't give people a reason not to do business with you. Right? Well, they were in here saying they've been in insurance for five years. I can't even find them online. All the insurance agents are online. Why aren't they? Oh, that's weird. That might be a scam. Do you see what I'm saying? All right. Let's see. 100% we need a push to present each time we walk into the business. Three times. Push to present three times. That means we're going to try three times. Hey, is it okay if we do it now? No, I only got 15 minutes. Yeah, I understand that, but it's only going to take about 15 minutes. Yeah, but you know, it's been kind of crazy, but man, I understand that. It is a crazy world. It's only getting crazier. How about now? right? Three times, right? Everybody needs to be writing that down, right? So from what I've given you, that one probably should have been higher on the list. The name drop, the quit six, the golden tickets, call those you said on Mondays and Fridays, put it on your four-week forecast, understanding how we save taxes, higher retention, your LinkedIn looking good, and push for the present, right? Three times, every time. That's a case a day now, and that's what we're going to want, but let's keep going, right? What's another perk of doing business with us? Oh my God, you have 10 employees. I'm going to give you $90,000 worth of insurance for free. If I just blew your head off, you need to go talk to your SA and AD, right? So we give everybody we meet a free $3,000 accidental death plan. Assume that everybody's married and has one kid. That's nine grand, right? They have 10 employees, $90,000 worth of free benefits, all right? So let me ask you, sir, I don't, you don't realize that if you do this right, you don't even have to present. By just asking the right question, let me ask you, sir, how much does it cost to onboard somebody? Um, I'm really not sure. Well, let me ask you, if I, you know, you got some welders out here or whatever, all right, if I came to work for you right now, would I have to go to any kind of school? No, we kind of expect you to do it. Did you take one of the supervisors to show me my job? Yeah. All right, what's that supervisor making a week? 
Oh, he makes a thousand bucks a week. Okay, so a thousand bucks. How many weeks is he under training? Eh, about a week or two. Okay, about two thousand bucks. Great. When you hire somebody, do you go? The people bring you the people. Or you put a job ad up. They go, oh, we put a job ad on Career Builder. I'm like, all right, five hundred bucks. All right, so we're about twenty five hundred dollars for onboarding. Do you guys see what I'm saying? Right. So let me ask you, like doing this program is going to definitely help you with that because of retention. Second thing is, how many employees do you have? We have 10. Great. Right. So let's take the $90,000 worth of free benefits they're going to give you, plus the $2,500 that I'm going to save you because your retention is going to go up. Right. So we're at $92,500. That's my value to you right now. Does it matter what I'm selling? Because if you don't think it, if you don't think it is, I'll make you a deal. Write me a check in my name for $5,000 right now. And I promise not to follow up with you. <laughs> have I said any, is there anything there that I, I haven't even talked about a policy, right? I haven't even talked about what we do, right? There's no reason once you have the mindset of leadership to understand you can close a case every day. Some of you can close two or three cases a day. Now you're going to get busy. And that's why I went to the top. When you find gold, get more gold. Don't be like, oh, I got a case. Or I got two cases. I need to do that. No, keep running. Have cases stacked because no matter how much the AD is set two days for enrollment, some stuff's going to get pushed. The building burnt down is legit. If the building burnt down on Wednesday, it's probably not going to be there on Thursday. Right? That's legit. So you need another thing to back you up. All right. Tragedy. Right? Why do we sell life insurance? What's the value of life insurance? It's to protect you in case of tragedy. Right? Right? If you knew the day you were going to die, wouldn't everybody buy the life insurance the day before? Yeah. Right. Save you some money. I got you. Yeah. Right. The life insurance and what we do, the cancer, the accident, is because of tragedies and accidents. Are you guys, do you have stories of tragedies and accidents? Right. Are you guys using stories to put it in their mind and gel what you're doing? Right. So let me tell you this, Mr. Business Owner. I know I offered... For you to write me a check for five grand, and you don't seem too good into that either, right? I presented to you the value and the benefits and things like that, right? So let me leave you with this one more thing. And then, you know, if it doesn't work out, that's fine. I'm going to follow up with you, right? Because maybe it changes your mind. This weekend, right, you got 10 employees. Everybody goes out. Everybody, you had a great week, blah, 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 right? You don't hear anything from anybody. Everything's fine. And on Monday morning, you show up, right? And maybe there's a minivan right, or an SUV of the wife of one of your employees sitting in the driveway, and there's a wife, and she's just distraught, like just upset, right, and you're like, hey, what's going on, blah, blah, and she goes, you wouldn't believe it, you know, John's missing, he went fishing by the dam, they can't find him, they think he fell in, they're looking for him right now, and you're like, wow, and you really don't know what to do, like, do you go out and help look for John, or blah, 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 Right? And you say, well, come on inside, come on inside. And you get your, your guard dog gatekeeper to console her. And you just, you call your wife you're like, man, you know, John's missing. Oh my God, what happened? Oh, he went fishing. They can't find him. Oh my God. Right? And the reason why your wife knows who John is is because he's one of the people you count on in that building. Right? And then all of a sudden, the wife gets a call. They found John. He drowned. Right? Got trapped under the dam trying to get catfish. It happens happens in Indiana every week, right? And then she's like, well, the reason I came is because, you know, I want to see what kind of life insurance John had. And your answer is, I didn't see the value. First person to talk after that story loses. You just shut up and stare. Do you see what I mean? That's not going to close 100% of them. Nothing I'm giving you is going to close 100% of them. But you can't tell me if you have a story like that and you use stories like that, you ain't going to close more? Because at the end of the day, true? That's right. You're ready to buy right now, aren't you? I, it's not smooth. That's the thing. It's there. You all have it in you, right? You have to know the value and the wise people should do this. You're not giving them that. You're just like, hey, I'm here. I'm doing my walk-ins. You want to buy some life insurance? No? Okay. The only thing you're doing is helping DSW shoes because you're wearing a pair out every two weeks. Why are you doing that? Are you DSW shoe stock owners? Right? We're not doing that. All right.